My name's Jeremy Tomley. Spike Richards with Saber Bats. My name is Tasha Messer-Williams. Benjamin Green. My name is Seth Boris, and I am a modern-day bladesmith. Whether it's down-home southern cooking, skilled craftsmanship, or beautiful artwork, Mississippi is full of amazing people and amazing stories. So let them tell you what it means to be made in Mississippi. I'm Eric Graham. I own Graham MMA in Petal, Mississippi. I remember watching the UFC with my dad when it came out in 1993. So I was eight years old, seeing the Gracies, Hoist Gracie dominate the first UFC event. And uh, I just knew I wanted to do that. But there was really nowhere around here uh, to get into it. Nobody was really doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or MMA stuff at that time. It wasn't even called MMA at that time. So I carried boxing gloves around with me when I was younger and went through high school. and. Finally started training um, at Hattiesburg Boxing Club, Hub City Boxing Club, when I was uh, 17 or 18. Um, I knew I wanted to do MMA and Jiu Jitsu, but there, like I said, there wasn't a place around here to do it. Um, so that was as close as I could get. So I started off, did my first boxing match in 2003. Um, I found some guys putting on an MMA show in Jackson, Alabama. So uh, that was my first MMA fight, was in 2005 or 2006, maybe. Um, but again, just, just self-trained, just figuring it out. Um, it, it would have been a lot easier for me if there was a, a gym to just pop into like, like there is here now. I always just enjoyed fighting. I, I, just, I just liked it. I wasn't trying to make a career of it. Even in back in 2005, 2006, when I started doing MMA, um, there wasn't a lot of money to be made in it. It wasn't near as popular as it is now. I just enjoyed it. So I fought amateur um, for several years. I did 13 amateur MMA fights. Uh, mostly around the southeast, you know, some in New Orleans and Mobile and, you know, a few in Mississippi on the coast. They started doing some big shows here. Um, promoter taught me into going pro. A lot of guys went pro before I did. I, I didn't really, I didn't want to make money at it or try to make a living doing it. Um, ended up going pro, I think, in 2009. Uh, won my first three fights, so went 3-0. Went and oh, and uh, Got busy working, man. Also running an air conditioning business, so I have a heating and air conditioning business, and still kind of training myself. Um, I have an instructor, my professor Israel Gomez, who, who comes through and ranks me and, and you know teaches seminars for us. But he's never been in house teaching and training me and, and, and pushing me. So um, I made a lot of mistakes. I ended up uh, trying to cut too much weight on a few fights and um, not knowing how to do that properly, not not being the best conditioned. Um, having the skills but not having you know someone behind me to push me to make me get in shape and do the right things so um ended up now uh, I, I fought pro for a little while up until 2011 or 12 you know i think i had six or seven fights and won most of those i only lost i've only lost two two fights as a professional um and those were at a lower weight class trying to cut a lot of weight and again not knowing how to do that well um so i kind of fell into the trainer role so I was enjoying fighting, but I was training my training partners just so I would have training partners and people to, you know, to, to help beat up on me. Um, so ended up recruiting a bunch of friends that ended up competing in MMA and uh, just started coaching. So it got, it got so busy with the coaching and teaching and, and worrying about everybody else that I stopped focusing on myself and fighting for a while. I actually took an eight year break without competing and fought again three years ago. Came back and won, won another MMA fight. Um, again, it's not something that I was trying to pursue as a career. It's something I just enjoyed doing and I enjoyed training with my, my friends and staying in shape and learning. Um, I think if I would have just focused on myself, I could have moved to a big camp and, you know, tried to make a go at, you know, fighting at the highest level. I think I could have done well, but that's just never been my goal. Now, at this point, I've got over 20 MMA fights, including my amateur and, and professional fights. Competed in boxing also, won a couple amateur titles. Um, I held a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, uh, first degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Israel Gomez, and then also uh, Muay Thai black belt. So here we teach Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu separately. 
So Muay Thai is what they call the art of eight limbs. It's like the national sport in Thailand. So it's kickboxing using uh, knees and elbows also. So I teach that as a separate art. Um, and then also Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a separate art. So we have people who just compete in kickboxing and people who just compete in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So then we blend those two together and wrestling and judo and uh, you know, among other things to create the MMA team. You know, we, we train all of that in our MMA classes. I've got, like I said, probably 15 uh, active MMA fighters in the gym. Most of those are amateurs. Uh, so you have to do so many amateur fights and be pretty successful as an amateur to go pro. Um, so now we have five or six pros in the gym. Um, a lot of them are doing really well. Like I said, getting noticed by some bigger promotions, getting some offers and stuff. We've got Monica Medina here who drives up from Biloxi a couple days a week. She actually owns a gym down there, but she drives up here to train with me. And uh, she's fighting for a bare knuckle boxing world title in August. Um, so she, she fights uh, for BYB Extreme Bare Knuckle Boxing and also doing MMA. She's got two pro MMA fights coming up. Um, I met Eric about a year and a half ago. Uh, he called me and asked me to come up and train with one of his girls. Um, I'm from the coast, so I came up and trained with her and then we instantly connected and I've been driving up here training with him for about a year and a half now. Yeah, I think it's very important um, you know, to have a local gym with some experienced people. Um, my gym is a lot of fitness. I do like kids. I do some adult stuff, um, but my main adult training is up here. Um, to have something like this is amazing. It's only like an hour and 20 minute drive for me, um, so it's still pretty local. Um, and it's, it's very, very important. We built a, a pretty big, big, pretty big school. It's just just evolved over time. That you know, finally I had to get my own building, and um, I had a group of guys there training with me, and had to pay the bills. So I started advertising, started doing kids classes. That was eight years ago, almost nine, and um, now I have close to 200 members. We've got probably 15 fighters. Um, so it's cool, it's cool to see it grow here so much, you know. Uh, MMA's gotten so popular, and in the Hattiesburg area, anywhere from the coast to Jackson, like, this is the gym, this is the place to be. It's the only place where you're gonna become an MMA fighter. So it's been cool for me to see, um, and just watching guys coming up walking in the gym without a day of training, you know, and now they're pro fighters. I've got Jamal Tatum out there, started with me eight years ago, and now he's 5-0 and as a professional. He's fighting a UFC veteran next month. Um, a couple other undefeated uh, pros in the gym that are taking big fights, getting offers from big organizations. So uh, it's, it's been really cool to watch it grow and see these guys succeed. Eric has made me a better athlete. He's taught me taught me different styles. He's taught me how to train, what to train, what to look at, what to be. Um, awesome man. He's he's strong. He's athletic. He's explosive. And my whole game is based off of everything he speaks about. This has made, gave me so much confidence. It's it's changed my whole personality. Like this, my personality revolves around this. Who I am is this. Uh, I'm sad when I can't come to the come train. Uh, Missing the gym, it's it's terrible. Uh, I love seeing people that need help and want my help, so I, it helps me help them. It makes me a better person. So yeah, I met my instructor, Professor Israel Gomez, um, back in maybe 2008, 2009. Um, he's from Brazil, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Muay Thai master. He came and started doing seminars for me and, and, and teaching me and some of the guys here and there. Um, so I became ranked under him eventually. Um, so now I hold a, a Muay Thai black belt and a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt under Israel. I got my first degree on my black belt about a year ago. Um, so we're affiliated under, under him and Anderson Silva have the American Killer Bees Association. So that's the killer bee you see all over the walls and everything that we wear. Um, so we actually had Anderson Silva here a year ago. Um, so we're, we're just a big association. We're probably 10 to 15 gyms across the United States and then some in Australia and other places overseas that are all affiliated with the Killer Bee Association. There are eight years between my, my brothers and me, so, um, my, so my youngest brother is 16 years younger than me. Um, so they've been training with me for the last eight or so years. Uh, both my brothers are um, awesome competitors, really, really good teachers. They help me teach classes now. Uh, they've caught on really well. And then one of my longtime training partners and assistant coaches married my sister. So uh, Patrick Davis married my sister and he's getting his black belt, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt in a month. So he's a pro fighter here also. So now I've got 
two of my brothers and, and my brother-in-law in the gym with me helping teach and, and fighting and, and competing in jiu-jitsu. So uh, a lot of good fighters in the gym. But we don't only do that now. I have a big competition jiu-jitsu team. So a lot of the kids go and compete in Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournaments. Uh, a lot of the adults as well. So um, it's getting very popular. Um, a lot of our guys are, are competing in jiu-jitsu. Those are becoming, um, they have those tournaments now probably once every couple of months in Mississippi. We travel and do some in Louisiana and Alabama and Florida and stuff too. Um, so big competition team, but you don't have to compete if you train here, you know. That's, that's um, a lot of people have that misconception. They think they're gonna come in the gym and, you know, get punched in the face the first day. But, you know, we've got kids starting at five years old all the way up to, you know, guys in their 60s doing jujitsu. So, you know, we've got classes for everybody. I have women's kickboxing classes where they're just hitting mitts, punching bags, you know, for cardio. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of hobbyists that just are training now to stay in shape and they enjoy the sport and they get to train alongside the fighters. So, you know, the, the gym's, um, it's just a cool place to hang out. A lot of people from a lot of different walks of life, you know, uh, all just hanging out and getting in shape and learning some techniques, you know. Yeah, it's, it's been a huge part of my life, man. It's so cool to see um, just people grow and change as they come in the door. I've seen so many people come in and timid or, or you know, had self-esteem problems or dealing with whatever kind of problems and, and it's places like therapy for them, you know. Um, get to come in, like I said, and get a workout, train hard and sweat and, you know, good camaraderie. So. It's cool for me to see that. I have so many people now that I coach that look up to me and they come to me, you know, about everything, not just not just uh, MMA and jiu-jitsu advice, but about life, you know. So it's like a big family. So that's that's really cool is, uh, you know, just the, the family atmosphere that we have here and how close everybody is. I mean, everyone knows it sucks to have to travel with your train and stuff, but when you don't have to travel as much and you got a gym like this right in the neighborhood, it's, it's pretty awesome.